Microsoft is going to be advertising its Copilot AI at the Super Bowl. And I just tried it out. <sighs> okay, so this has been a good month for AI, man. Listen, I love ChatGPT. It is the absolute best. I love Google Gemini. I was highly impressed with Google Gemini. I was super impressed as a normal person using these, not an expert. As a normal person, I was super, super excited about trying out this Microsoft Copilot, especially when I heard that they were going to be advertising at the Super Bowl. I said, man, they must have something amazing. They must have made it look great, something. All right, because I know they redid a few things. So I downloaded the Microsoft Copilot app yesterday. First thing I did was run a prompt on ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot, the same prompt just to see uh, you know, how it feels. Now, ChatGPT was instant. It seemed like it, I don't know if it's just my ChatGPT. It, in, it seemed like it instantly gave me the result that I needed, the answer. I didn't have to wait. Um, Copilot is a little bit of wait. Um, it's not a big deal, but if I have to choose between ChatGPT and Copilot to do a prompt, I'm going to choose ChatGPT. Um, but it wasn't bad. Now, what I did notice was it felt cold. Now, here's something that's interesting. They need to make it easier. In my humble opinion, they need to make it easier to find the conversation tone. You have to go up to the three little dots at the top and click that. And then it says high tone down at the bottom. Then you click that and then it pops up the tones on the front on, on the front page. Then you can choose tones like to make it uh, more personable, to make it uh, in, in the sort of in the middle and then have it to be precise. All right. Now, I felt like that should be easier to find. That should be right on the front page, because when I first used it, I was not happy with how cold and robotic and Siri like and Google Assistant like it seemed it did. And I don't like that. I told you I like. Listen, I love what ChatGPT does. They're like, right. They're just good enough as far as being personable. Then Google Gemini, it seems like in my from my experience, it's almost like how. I, uh, um, someone would speak to me if they, if they're a real person, that sounds crazy, but you know, AI is very robotic a lot of times, but it's very personable. It's very warm. It's very inviting. It talks to me kindly, not like I'm an idiot. I felt a, a lot of times like co-pilot, the prompts that it gives me, it spoke to me like I was a moron <laughs> or a child. <laughs> just, this is just my experience. You may have a different one, but when you change the conversation tone, and this is why it's important. It gets better. So when you go to that lower setting where it's more personable, more creative, I think that's what they call it. It was much better. I'm like, OK, now this is going in the direction of what I like. It's more personable. It's more like a person talking to me. And even that could have been improved a lot greatly. They have a long way to go, I believe, with Copilot, but they're on to something, but they have a long way to go. A lot of room for improvement. Um, now, with Precise, I felt like Precise gave me more of a chat GPT feel. But once again, if you don't know that, if you don't know to click those little three buttons and then change the conversation tone to match what suits you, that could be a turnoff. You know, if it's talking to you cold, because I was almost turned off by that, turned away from the, the product by that. Like, wow, this is talking to me very cold. I don't like this. I already have ChatGPT. I already have Google Gemini. Why would I use this? You see? But then once I learned that there was the possibility to change tone, now I'm more, I was more open to sticking with using the system, okay? So that's one, that's one thing there. No, now, now, superficially, the prompt boxes, I like how, to contrast, I like how the size that Google Gemini has. It's not, it's, it's not too big, it's not too intrusive. I feel like the prompt boxes on Copilot are just too big. They're trying to show off the images. I get it. We're, a lot of us are very familiar with AI imaging. It doesn't need to be to be that big. We understand you have fantastic images as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but just make them just a little bit smaller, just a little bit. They're too big. They, they take up too much of the screen and it, it serves very little purpose in my humble opinion. So at least make it adjustable. Some people may like that. I get that. Some people may like the, that bigger size. I don't. Let us adjust that. Give us an option to adjust it at the least. Because I'm telling you now, I don't like that. Um, now, there's a thing at the top, right? Sort of like how when you go to Google Gemini, it says uh, good morning or whatever whatever you program it to say if you have advanced. Um, but I like that. I like what Google Gemini offers. It's small. It's colorful. Very nice coloring. It looks beautiful in my humble opinion. Now, 
Copilot has something at the top and it says this, it has this your everyday AI companion um, um, sentence written at the top. Do I have to look at that every single day? Cause I don't want to, I don't like that. That's not, it's like you're trying to brainwash me. That old school style of brainwashing and conditioning, I, I, dislike, I dislike it greatly. So that, you know, they put that there in my humble opinion so that it, it programs your mind to be like, every day I can use a, this AI companion. No, we're much, I think in this day and age, we're wise enough to know what we want to use, right? So don't put something like that. Make it a warm welcome. Welcome. Just put welcome. Hello. Good morning, good evening, make it adjustable. Something warm and welcoming, like like this is a friend, like this is a family member. That's going to make people want to use it. You get what I'm saying? Um, I think that's good for business, but I don't, I, I, I immediately said to myself, because I played with it multiple times since, since I downloaded it, um, I said to myself, I don't want to see your everyday AI companion at the top of the screen every day. I don't like it, it's annoying, it, it just... Bad, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth, right? And I get tired of reading that over and over, and I'm just going to avoid the app because I just don't even want to see that. It's just I don't need annoyances. I need comfort when I use something. I need I need to feel great when I use something. That's how I that's how I feel, especially if I'm going to be upgrading, which most people do. Most people use ChatGPT, the upgraded one to twenty dollars a month. I did. Most people are going to use um, Google Gemini, the upgraded version, twenty dollars a month. So most people are going to pay for the better product, right? So. If that's the case, I'm not going to pay for something that's going to make me uncomfortable. I'm just I'm giving you the real breakdown here from a regular person. Keep it simple. I feel like that's another thing. I feel like they tried to make things way too complicated with this. Google Gemini is so simple to use, and that's what we want. The AI is sophisticated. We know what it we know its capabilities are very advanced. That's great. But keep the use by the the customer, the user simple. Simple is the way to go. ChatGPT keeps it simple. We know it's the best of the best. We know it's fast. We know it can do incredible things, but they keep it simple. I feel like Copilot is just making things too complicated. So in addition, in addition to these three dots up here, then you have the other menu here where you can go down and you can access the image creation and, and um, like uh, other things like recipe, building, stuff like that. Um, I just feel like it's unnecessary. I feel like well, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, why is this here when you can do that from the front page, just right in the prompt box? Why is that here? Um, I just feel like it's, it's too there's too much. I feel like there's a lot of room for improvement and maybe they were rushing things because of Google Gemini and ChatGPT making these massive advances. Um, and, you know, Microsoft does want to play, but you have to take your time and do better. They can do great. And I feel like in the future, they have the opportunity to make things better, even better and do great. But they have to improve on some of these things or because if you ask someone like me, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go to chat GPT and I'm going to go to Google Gemini every single time. And I've been using both of them for different things. They excel at different things. You can use both together. And they've been fan a fantastic tag team. Fantastic. If you want to be that third player in there, no, you're going to have to do better. Now, the one great thing about this, right? Um, I didn't talk about the looks. It looks okay. It looks okay. Like it's not great like Gemini. Um, it's not too plain. I, I even like ChatGPT's plain layout, simplistic layout, and it's coloring everything better than Copilot. I, I you know. But that's just my my humble opinion. But the one thing that's great about this is the Dolly 3 images that it produces in its designer section. Now, that's the reason to keep this. That is the reason I'm going to keep Copilot. All right. I'm going to end it off with a, on a very positive note. I use a lot of image generators now. You know, coming from old school where I'm an artist who began with with oil paints and and acrylics and things of that nature at a young age and you know, in my adult years, I moved a lot of artwork, work, work with a lot of professionals. These days, I use a lot of AI image generating. OK, so I played with quite a few different programs. This Dolly 3 program that they're using in here for on Copilot is great. It's great. It's amazing what you can do, how easy, easy they make it to swap something inside of an image or to convert an image, the speed of it. It is fantastic, folks. If you need a simple uh, image generator that's, uh, I mean, download Copilot because it's going to give you some pretty good AI. Pretty good AI. Is, is, I don't think it's better than ChatGPT or Google Gemini, but it's pretty good. It's right there. It's good. Uh, it'll, you'll have that. 
and you'll have the image generator that you can use to make flyers, banners, anything that you can think of. This stuff is amazing. So um, good job on incorporating that. On, uh, 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 but I'll say the one thing when you generate an image, it does this like colorful uh, um, effect across the image. Give us the option to remove that. I don't want to see that every single time. I don't. I just want to see the image. That's it. You're doing too much once again. But the image generation is fantastic. I like it. I'm going to be using it. Um, it won't be my first option, but I definitely will be using it. Um, so that was the best part about Microsoft Copilot. Um, I'm looking forward to see what they do in the future. You know, I hope Microsoft does well. Uh, so now that you have that information, until next time, folks, take care.